Hello and welcome all project management enthusiasts. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the corner on the screen so you don't miss a thing. Oh, and if you're returning, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to build a work breakdown structure, WBS, and how to build a solid project schedule from the components of a WBS. And we're going to be using just a plain spreadsheet. You can use whatever tool you like. If you're going to learn, it's easily transferable to whatever tool you're going to be using. Start with the work breakdown structure. A work breakdown structure can be considered as a divide and conquer approach to getting your project done. In this example, we're doing a three level WBS. Starting at the very top, the green is level zero or the title of the project. For our example today, we're planning a party um, and that is the project we need to manage. So we are calling it the party project. Level one or the blue boxes are what's called the control accounts. These are the groups or phases of work that is managed as its own work stream and you report statuses on. Uh, level two, the ones in yellow are, or anything beyond that, if you wanna get a little bit more granular than this, are the work packages. These are all the activities and deliverables that are going to result from the work that your project team is going to be doing. If you uh, notice, generally the deliverables are in nouns and not verbs, because these are what's going to be delivered to the client, not the work that your team is doing. So we're going to plan this party project in four phases. We're going to do the planning, preparation, event itself, and then the cleanup after. And everything that you see underneath it is in no particular order or sequence. It's just a result of a brainstorming session just to make sure to capture um, everything that needs to be done to get this party planned, how do we need to prepare, and uh, what's gonna happen during the party, and what do we need to clean up. So for planning, we've got invitation and location, and preparation, we need food and drinks, tables and chairs if we're going to rent them, decorations, party favors, and booking a DJ. And for the event itself, we need to be having the music going, we're going to be serving dinner, and we're going to play some games. And when everybody's gone and the party is over, we need to get the tables and chairs ready to be picked up again and put away the food and drinks and clean up afterwards. the WBS and the schedule side by side so you can see how I started taking the elements from the WBS and start building my project schedule. And I'm going to walk you through what all the different columns are and why do we need them. So first and foremost, you start with the blue level or your level one and put those as you can see them, they're in bold. So these are your higher level that you want to track. So I've got 1.0 as the plan, 2.0 as the preparation and event, 3.0 and cleanup. From there, I go to the yellow section. So these are your work packages and here is where I actually do sequence them because I do want them to go in order. So first I need to identify my location and before I can send out my invitation. So I put location at the top and what do I need to do for the location? This is where we're gonna go into the verbs. So I'm going to need to research and pick a location and then I need to reserve the location. And you can see how I'm numbering them. So I go from 1.0 to 1.1, and then the two activities under 1.1 are going to be 1.1.1 and 1.1.2. And you continue that 
throughout the project schedule. Next, it's going to be the invitations and what are the different activities I need to do for the invitations. That's where I need to pick an invitation design, um, send the invitations, and then I need to collect the RSVP so I know how many people are coming. From there is preparation. Order food and drinks, table and chairs, I've decided to rent them. So before knowing how many tables and chairs I need, I first of all need to know the number of headcounts that are going to be at the party and then put together a design of how do I want to arrange my seating and then go ahead and put my order in to rent them. So you can see how this is defined as you continue on and fill out the rest for all the different phases. One way to keep track of the order of activities, you need to understand that while some things can be done in parallel, other activities need to wait for a predecessor. So that's what this column is that points out what activity needs to happen before this one can happen. So I can't reserve a location until I've picked my location. So that is a hard dependency that one needs to finish before the other. But at the same time, I can do some activities in parallel. So I didn't put any predecessors there, for example, my party favors. The only thing I do need to know is how many head counts, but I don't need to wait for food and drinks or tables and chairs before having to order uh, and put together my party favors. Another column you need to start putting into your project schedule are the resources. Who is going to be doing this task? Generally, when you have a project team, you have different people to do it here it's probably going to be me. So I'm going to be putting my name down here. But if somebody else on your team is responsible for doing one of these tasks, you're going to put their name on it. So for example, let me look for, where's my DJ who's gonna be playing the music. So here playing the music, that's going to be the DJ. And the equipment pickup, that's going to be the DJ. DJ is going to set up their own equipment. The table and chairs, when it's time for cleanup, that's the company. Well, actually, I'm going to be picking them up and folding them. And then the renting company is going to pick them up. So you get the idea. You also want to know the duration. How long is it going to take to get an activity done? Now, while here we're sticking to just number of days and to keep it simple, even though sending an invitation might take just one or two hours, we are going to just put and round it up into a day. But you might have projects where your tasks and activities might be by the hour or by the days or by the months. So that all depends on how long your project is and how granular you want to get. And then you can start putting in your dates. So what you need to know is when is the earliest time that I can start and that is going to be your starting date. If you look at the Gantt chart, I'm planning this party for June. So I need to pick my place and I need to research it. It'll probably take me a couple of days. So I'm going to start on 6-1 and because it's going to take me a couple of days, I'm going to put the end date as 6-2. Now, we talked about the predecessor of reserving the location being picking a location. So I cannot start until the end of the previous task. So the previous task ended on 6-2, therefore now I can reserve the location on 6-3. But it's only gonna take me one day, so I'm gonna end it on 6-3.
The little black diamonds that you see here are what's called milestones. Milestones are of zero duration and they mark a major event. So for example, because we have so many things maybe depending on picking and reserving our location, that is a major event. So we're gonna mark the end of it there. So I know by 6-3, I have my location reserved. Now I can start planning everything else. I need to know where the location is so I can put that in my invitation. So again, my starting date, my earliest that I can start doing that is 6-3 as well. And it'll probably just take me a day to do it. And you continue the same process for everything else. Now here, collect the RSVP headcounts. Once you send the invitation, you wanna give people time to receive the invitation, think about it, talk about it with their friends or family, and then send you back a response. So you wanna allow it enough time when you're going to get that. So for this, we have given it about five days and I've made that a milestone because once I have my head count, I can do a lot of other plannings for my party. How much food and drink I need to order and buy, how many tables and chairs I need to rent, where to arrange everybody, and the decoration probably have no dependency on the headcount, therefore you don't see a predecessor there. So I can do that independently and in parallel. But I do need the number of people for my party favors. So as you can see, Going to the right of this, what is called the Gantt chart, you can see this, this being my party favors, does not start until my milestone for the headcounts have been completed. Continue that through your party date. My party date happens to be on 6-15. So I've put it in red so it's obvious. But I do go beyond that date because the cleanup doesn't happen until the party has completed. So you can see I put the party event itself as a milestone followed by the cleanup and that marks the end of the project. And here you have a very simple project plan that was built from your WBS that we just went through and you can apply this to any project that you're working on. So as you're going through your project schedule, managing your project. You can also have a column for status as you're completing them, whether not started, in progress, or past due, or on track, completed. There you have it, a simple project schedule with your task, predecessors, resources, durations, and start and end date. I hope today's video was helpful and you're walking away with a solid foundation of understanding what a WBS is and how to build a project schedule, especially for those of you who are new to the world of project management. If you're interested in any other topics for future videos, make sure to leave a comment below and hit subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next week.